pretty much the systems they drop the cages. Um, there's various methods according to the region, and they're they're wire cages with wooden supports, and they have a, a narrow opening um, at a certain point, and they generally bait them with dead fish or bycatch from a, a previous catch, and just leave them down there for an extended period of time, and the passing fish in the area just go through standard sort of like a, an oversized lobster pot, pretty much. They go through the narrow opening, then they can't find their way out again. The divers or the, the boat, um, depending on their collection method, come back at a later date. For some of the smaller cages, they actually run ropes down, especially in areas where they're not supposed to be dropping them. Um, they don't want to mark them with buoys. Um, so they run two cages together with a rope, and then they triangulate where the rope will be lying, and they drop a hook and drag it along the bottom until it hooks the rope, and then they just yank the entire thing up and both cages come up together. Other methods that um, have been used in, in areas where they're not supposed to be using them as they drop down the, one of the fishermen on a basically a hooker, a hose pipe connected to a, a basic compressor they have on the boat. They jump down, identify the cage, attach a, a line or a, a, a grapple to it and they just yank it up individually. So pretty much you've got these large cages that are indiscriminate by whatever chooses to move into them and then they pull them up to the surface and take whatever they want to sell from it and then everything else that's by catch they reuse for bait or just throw back in the ocean later on. It was quite interesting watching crew members, the crew member that was actually assisting with the raising of the cages. It's something that we very rarely see here on Kotel because obviously we're recreational divers and we have very strict and stringent safety standards to adhere to but this guy was diving on compressed air so there was a, a compressor which was pumping air through just a, just through a hose pipe which he attached he had a, a mask and he attached just into his mouth and held on with his teeth uh, and that was the way that he was breathing his air whereas we would use buoyancy control devices and all of those kind of things he literally just jumped in and swam and he was diving to depths of maybe 30 meters to retrieve the cages. So that process was, it was quite an intriguing one to actually observe. We returned to many of the sites with the fishing boat captain and with the fisheries department, the local government, the mayor of Koh Tao and some others from the Safe Koh Tao group and community to go and pull up some of the cages. And we realized very quickly that when they pull up these cages, it's very, very fast rate of ascent and most of the fish within the cages come up with bloated stomachs and they end up dying very quickly. So we decided that we wouldn't go around and pull up the rest of the cages, but what we would do is go and locate them and send divers down to go and cut the nets. You know over the last five or six years we've been doing this kind of activities, proven very educational, it's also a very uh, self-satisfying way to, uh, to do some kind of work and it also is very enjoyable as well. Just making that initial discovery can open an entirely new, or it definitely will open a new chapter in your life. And then how far you want to go with it is up to you. It is literally, there's no end to what you can do underwater. Uh, and guaranteed, the more you do it, the more you're going to want to do it. Uh, it becomes quite addictive, you know, if you don't do it for a while, you're kind of itching to get back in the water. I think it's something about just, you know, going under the surface, it's just the breathing and the bubbles and the fishies and stuff like that. The diving is always about a feeling. It has, it's not just what you see underwater. And I think anybody who's been diving for a lot of time, it is just the feeling of being underwater. That calmness, that relaxation, that just one in the water and just your body just going up and down and the feel of it, it's just, it's amazing. And I think if people continue to dive, what you see is the added bonus of just being able to enjoy being underwater.
So I think you have to understand the ocean actually to to as well be able to connect with the creatures down there. Most of them, sure, we call fish, but we have also mammals down there, dolphins. They are very, very much connect with our, you know, with us humans underwater anyway, right? We do know that. I think if you have a feeling for for nature in general and you do love nature. Nature feels that you are one of those people that you're connected to nature as well and, and let you interact differently with nature in general, right? Normally with our group we try to remain purely positive. We try to only do positive projects that benefit everybody. So normally we're working with the fishermen or trying to increase the fisheries stock rather than attacking the fishermen. Um, but this time since the, it came from the fisheries department that they wanted these nets cut, as divers, we were all very, very happy to go and do that job. When we got down there, we would see look to be a hundred fish in there, some of them up to a meter and a half long cobias and stingrays and other things that we always really enjoy seeing when we're diving. So to see them in the cage is at first very heartbreaking, but to be able to be the ones that go and get to cut that cage and free those fish is very, very rewarding. And everybody on our boat today was very enthusiastic and happy to have done that job today.